This example points out an important difference between single quoted strings and double quoted strings. First I create a double quoted string with a new line character inserted after the word cat. Then I do the same thing except I use single quotes. When I run the program, I see that the new line character in the double quoted string is treated as such and the string is split with a new line with the word says meow displayed on the next line. Whereas with the single quoted string, the new line character is preserved within the string and the entire string is displayed as a single line. Although generally escaped characters are not interpreted within a single quoted string, if you need to put a single quote inside some text that's in a single quoted string, such as in this example, the dog's dinner, I need to put an apostrophe S after the word dog. But if I don't do anything special, the interpreter will think that the string consists of this and that these characters fall outside of the string. In a single quoted string, I can use a backslash apostrophe to indicate that I want a single quote to appear within the string, and it prints out normally. In a double quoted string, the apostrophe S doesn't need to be escaped because a single quote doesn't confuse the interpreter. Unlike in a single quoted string where the single quote seems to indicate the end of the string unless we use a backslash in front of it to escape it. If I use a tab character backslash T in a single and a double quoted string, I also see a different effect. In the double quoted string, it pushes the text dinner over to the right by one tab, whereas in the single quoted string, I just see the backslash T text appear before the word dinner. So in the single quoted string, except for the backslash apostrophe getting escaped and treated as interpreted text within the single quoted string, escaped characters are normally treated as just regular text. One other exception is in the case of two backslashes. Although the new line character and the tab character are treated as regular text, the two backslashes are treated as a single backslash in a single quoted string and also in a double quoted string. I could also have written the previous example with this format. In the case of a double quoted string, I'm using percent uppercase Q, and in the case of a single quoted string, I'm using percent lowercase Q. And instead of using quotes around the string, I'm using these bracket characters. If we look at the output, we see the exact same outcome as we had with our earlier syntax where we used quotes. In the single quoted string, the new line and tab characters are displayed as text, whereas in the double quoted string, they are interpreted within the string and result in the string being spread over two lines. If I wanted to, I could use any other type of delimiter that's non-alphanumeric. I switched the single quoted string from using brackets to curly braces, and I've switched the double quoted string to using angle brackets, and it has no effect on the outcome. Another way to identify the string in the previous example is to use what's called a here document. In this last example, I'm using the string H-E-R-E-D-O-C as an identifier to start and end a block of text that I want to assign to the here variable. So these four lines of text will make up the string that can be referred to with the here variable. And in this line, I'm printing out the value of that variable. As you can see, the new line and tab characters, as well as the escaped backslash character, are all treated the same way as you would expect if we used a double quoted string. The new line character causes this line to be skipped and the indentation of the word dinner is caused by the tab character. If I want to make the here document more complex, I can concatenate two here documents and assign them to the here variable. In this case, my first here document consists of this text, and the end of the document is indicated by the use of this identifier. And then my more here document consists of this text, and the end of that here document is indicated by this identifier appearing on a line by itself. So these two here documents are concatenated and assigned to the here variable, and then I print out the value of that variable. And if we look at the output, we see that the first here document starts here and ends with the word dinner, and the second one starts with more here and ends with tasty. 
What happens if you want to format the string the way that we formatted the single quoted string above? By default, the here document is going to treat its contents in the way that a double quoted string would, but if you prefer to use a single quoted format, you can put single quotes around the identifier that you use. This way, rather than seeing the first two lines followed by a blank line and a tab, we should see the new line and tab characters simply appear as text, as well as the two backspace characters. And that's what we see. In the More Here document, which is this section of text, instead of writing out the word tasty in the text, let's say that I want to substitute the value of a variable. So if I define a variable called description and assign the value tasty to it, I can substitute the value of that variable into the More Here document using a process called string interpolation. If I run the program, I see the same output. If the description variable is a global variable, I don't need these braces, but I do need the dollar sign.